bring your objects into the scene that's already set up and see how it works. Uh, Mark's gonna be talking about the lighting. We just wanna concentrate on just the basics here, which is the standard shader, which is gonna lead us into what Mark's gonna talk about shortly with uh, global illumination and physically based rendering. All right, so let's play this and see what this looks like. Notice, as it spins around, there's this kind of dynamic shadow here and lighting. Um, this has a particular glossiness value to it. Uh, let's look at, actually, what makes this up. So here's our overall pot. And if we look at what that's made up of, we have the body and the lid. So if I look at the top level game object here, I don't have any kind of shader here, any kind of renderer. So clearly I know I need to look further. If I go to the pot body here, on the mesh renderer, which is responsible for displaying an object, notice if I uncheck that mesh renderer, it disappears. Um, we have a material on a mesh renderer. So if I click on the material, it shows me in my project where that material is. Now remember, I said, uh, if you want to display something, you need a material, and that material has a shader. So this object has a material, and that material has a shader here. And I can choose different shaders here. Um, of course, these are all, a lot of these, the older, uh, and they still work just fine, but going forward, we're moving to the standard shader model. But again, these are a lot of the old ones. You can see, kind of see the look of them changes. Let's go back to the standard shader here. So there's standard and standard specular setup. If I go to the standard, we have a couple different maps that you can assign here. And with this, you can really customize how the shader looks. So notice right now, um, we have just a color assigned to this here, to the albedo. We can assign an image here as well. Uh, what we're going to look at later on with our game, like, let's go back to our game right here. And when Matt was showing like those objects before, let's take our cave, for example. If I click on this cave and I look on our mesh render, we see, oh, there's a cave here. Click on our cave. We're using a standard shader. But now notice, instead of here, we have an albedo color and no texture assigned. Notice this is empty. Over here, we're actually white but we have an image assigned. So there's that cave texture. If I mess with the colors here, you can notice it, it changes the entire overall tint. So not only can you assign a texture, but how that kind of looks in the environment here. Now going back here, let's go ahead and increase that metallic value. Now this, to kind of show you that chart again here, if we increase that metallic value, we go to more metallic looking and increase the smoothness, we um, increase that reflectivity value. So let's go ahead and increase our metallic value here. So you can see we get a different look here and change our smoothness value. This seems very physically based. Very physically based. <laughs> <laughs> a normal map is a weird looking image. If you, uh, I think we can control click to preview these. Not sure how the resolution will come across on your end. These are mostly this kind of purplish looking image. And this kind of, it's a trick that will give you depth on your objects without necessarily having to render uh, these difficult light paths at runtime. It's a, it's a trick to basically having uh, details on your objects here. So there's our normal map. You can do things like occlusion. You can um, mark. I've seen you do some stuff. Actually, I think you're going to show uh, using occlusion today, right? I am. Yep. All right, so Mark's going to show you a little bit of occlusion in a bit. Emissive materials, where you can make materials essentially give off light, uh, as opposed to just kind of reflecting off light as well. So you can control a lot of these values to really change the way these objects look. Uh, if I go back to my cave, for example, and I look at that um, shader on this, the standard shader, and I want to make my cave metallic looking and smooth, right? It uses that cave texture, but turns it into this kind of metallic looking texture on there. So really, you can fine tune the way that things look. Uh, and you might import something that you get from somebody else and realize it doesn't look right at all, in which case you have to go in and kind of play around with some of these settings to get it to look the way that you want it to look. Make sense? Clear as mud? Sweet. Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go into talking about lighting and skyboxes. Sure. Because the standard shader kind of feeds into these values here. Uh, in Unity, we have a new skybox. Now, previously, uh, skyboxes existed in Unity beforehand, and we yes. could use them quite for some time. You want to add clouds to your world, you know, nice blue sky scene, um, you add a skybox. With Unity 5, uh, skybox is also a material, and it has a sky, what did I say about materials? We need a shader on a shader. material. Yep. So a skybox material, it has a, uh, it's a material with a skybox shader. And that shader can be, um, you can choose a six-sided image. So if you are a photographer, you can use six images and piece them together and make your own. QMap, uh, new Unity 5 is procedural. We'll look at that shortly as well. 
Mark, you want to tell us a little bit about HDR skyboxes? Sure. So HDRs are high dynamic range images. And you'd mentioned being a photographer, you know, go out there taking six images. Imagine taking six images of the same image. Um, so actually, I'm going to minimize my screen here real quick. And I'm going to show you guys an HDRI. So uh, this image that we're about to see on my screen, let's get this guy to load up. There we go. Oh, what's going on here? Hmm, no one doesn't want to load. All right, well, that's weird. Come back to the slides, work yep. on that a bit, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to that because we're going to do some other stuff for our Skybox demo here. Uh, with the new procedural Skybox, you can also uh, dynamically control these properties. And we're going to look at some of this here, with the new procedural Skybox. So I'll start out while you get that kind of running over there. Sure, that's, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, that's not launching the HDRI viewer. All I was really going to show was how, what an HDRI, an HDRI is. So essentially what an HDRI is, is you take uh, four or five different pictures of the same image. Uh, you put your camera on a tripod uh, and just increase your f-stops. So you take one like f2, f6, f10. You put all those into a program like HDRI Shop, which munges them together and creates one high dynamic, high dynamic range image. You can then use that to light your scene. And it's pretty amazing what it can do because that image now contains the entire dynamic range, obviously that's why it's called that, of that day or that environment, indoor, outdoor, whatever. So, you know, when, you're, when your camera is only letting in a little bit of light, the sun is going to appear as a little tiny white hot spot, whereas the rest of the image is going to be black. As you start to let more light into your camera lens, that increases how much the visible light is uh, in that image. So you take all that, you put it into Unity, and you have something like this. So let me just show you that here. Um, so here I've taken that, uh, the cave scene, just kind of simplified it a little bit. And we're just using the, uh, the procedural skybox right now. But if I go here, and literally just grab a skybox. Let me go into my skybox folder here. I've got a couple of them set up. As soon as I drop this in, look at what happened to the entire lighting of that scene. You can see we really get a very different lighting effect. And if I grab this other one here, look at that. The entire scene gets changed just by me um, changing that light source. If I go here to my directional light, and let's just tweak down the intensity, this illumination, every bit of the illumination except for the blue that we're seeing in the cave is being delivered by that HDRI skybox. Mm. And now I can actually go and rotate that with this slider here and watch, you can actually watch that light rotate around inside and around your cave. It's really cool. This gives you the ability to light a scene with an image that just rival, I mean, instead of building a crazy light rig, you just pop a couple images in there and there you go. Uh, if I go back to my, uh, to my skybox here, let's take our directional light. You know, we've always been able to you know, if I crank up my directional intensity again, we've always had the ability to... Scorch the earth. Scorch the earth. And you, <laughs> and you can see I've got my hard shadows going on right now. So that's just coming from the main directional light. Uh, the skyboxes use more of like a ambient occlusion style lighting. So it's a very soft, diffused sort of a shadow that you get. Um, very, you know, a lot less harsher or, or intense than a, than a uh, directional light or a spotlight shadow. But it just has this really warm look to them. Um, so I kind of like to use both in conjunction. I like to have a directional light to kind of give me that heavy shadow, and then I use a nice skybox just to kind of fill in the nice. nice ambient light with that. It gives all, you know, that, that deferred lighting. Let's go over to my scene here, and I'm going to go to window lighting. I already have it open, but just to show you where it's at here. So window lighting. Now Mark showed dragging and dropping into a scene. Uh, you can also see what is set. It used to be under edit uh, render settings, I believe. Edit render settings, and you can set your skybox in here. Now in Unity 5, it's different. It's under window lighting, and the little scene here shows you your skybox material. So if I click on my skybox material, it brings me to the material in my project, which is a material, it's in .mat. Now I have to go back to my inspector to view those values. Let's close this tab out, and this tab, clean this up a little bit. All right, so my skybox here, notice when I look at my skybox shader, again, a material uses a shader, there's what I can use, a six-sided, if I want to set all my images here. If I want to set this to a cube map, I can set my cube map, or the, the new one here also, um, I can set my procedural. And with a procedural, you can control all these values in code. Let's rotate, let's increase my sun size here. There we go, there's my sun, which in this case, in this scene, kind of actually looks like a moon because of my kind of uh, sky value here. Out in the desert? What's that? Oh, we got in the desert? Out in the desert, right? Get <laughs> <laughs> the coyotes right now. But so with a sun size, you can change this here. Atmospheric th thickness, again, so this is all procedural, this is all calculating it at runtime. It's not an image that's based upon. 
that. And we can change our sky tint here as well. So let's give it like something like that. Change our, our, our sun size. So it kind of almost looks like the uh, moon just coming up here. And you can change your exposure. Let's look over at everything here. The exposure setting with an HDRI skybox is really powerful. I mean, it gives you, you're, you really have all that range in that image uh, and the exposure value will, will take advantage of that. All of these settings, you can control through code. You can animate these settings. Um, you can use these in conjunction with what Mark was showing on the rotation. So for example, uh, if you wanted your light to move across your sky, and at the same time, you wanted to change um, maybe your exposure like that during daylight, and over time, you just wanted to animate back down like this and change your sky color. You can control all that. So you can have essentially a whole dynamic sky system Absolutely. by controlling the rotation on your light and by animating these properties here. And with a clever script, you can actually crossfade between two HDRI skyboxes. So you can Ooh, actually do like a real That's pretty cool. day to night, night to day, day to afternoon. So you can have your, your sun and your clouds and then your script will then merge that into, kind of crossfade that between your uh, your moon and your dark sky, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, you really get those cool, you know, like you see in a lot of games nowadays. You get those those night day changes, um, clouds are moving, all that stuff's happening. Your shadows are moving, and all that ambient light, the deferred lighting is is also moving. It's great. Cool. I gotta see the demo. I haven't seen the uh, the merging of the two. That's pretty neat. All right, uh, let's talk about lighting next. This all kind of leads in together here. In Unity, we have and have had four different types of lights. So directional, uh, which is like a sun and sky, point, spotlight, and then area light. Now, lighting is expensive. When you think about all the calculations that have to take place at runtime to render your scene, all your materials, be able to run around the 3D environment, and have to calculate shadows and lighting, it, it is amazing what computers can do. And as such, that's why we see sometimes things don't run well, because we're always pressing limits to our hardware. So baking is a process where you try to pre-calculate uh, how light is going to hit your scene, and you actually create images from that, uh, textures, stores them behind the scenes, and at runtime figures out which ones to show and how it's going to show them. It, it's a lot more efficient. For sure. And Unity has uh, included some really cool stuff for Unity 5 to uh, to help with this. And now, one of the we got two concepts we're going to talk about here, physically based rendering, PBR. Not that PBR. Nope. The... Um, <laughs> 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 and global illumination. There's a uh, there's a frosty beverage some folks refer to as PBR. That's uh, that was the joke there for those that didn't get that. And if you did, I hope you're laughing at home right now. <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk about a little math on the slide here. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much simple. I don't know okay. how much math you guys remember. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive kind of a little deep on here. On the left hand side, no, I'm just kidding. You and I solved that earlier this morning over breakfast, right? That's right. Is that we the one we solved? Did. Right. We solved that. On my old graphing calculator. <laughs> so that's a simple formula that helps enable the physically based rendering. Uh, <laughs> Unity 5 has added this real-time system that's enhanced by a system called Enlighten. Yes. And uh, Mark, this allows us to what kind of cool stuff? Oh man, uh, just like it says, allows for environment, textures, light. Uh, just the way deferred lighting, indirect lighting is going to bounce around your scene. You know, if you hold a red ball to a white wall, it's not the light that's that's actually, it's not lighting the wall, it's bouncing that energy off the wall, the physical base render, the PBR. So we can now do that. So I'll show you here in just a second. We can take an object and actually have it emit, it doesn't emit light, and it's hard to actually stop saying it's emitting light. It's actually emitting energy. It's emitting deferred color to that uh, indirect lighting to that huh. scene. It's very cool, and then it bakes it, so there's no performance hit at all. It's, it's all it's zero impact right on the GPU. So the idea is that you get this realistic, uh, physically accurate, look to what you're doing. Yes. Um, as you mentioned earlier, there's Viking Village. So if you want to see a great example that you can download and kind of play around. So we had that kind of setup scene that I showed you before, the shader calibration scene, which does have PBR in it. Um, also, Viking Village is kind of the de facto sample that Unity has put out there. In fact, if we just say Unity Viking Village. Yeah, that's a crazy cool scene. It's all LiDAR scanned, so it's laser scanned. Yeah, so you can look at even just, we're not going to dive into the scene here, but just so you can see what kind of stuff, if you open, you can download that, you can look at all the assets and check that out. That is it's an incredible demo, so I highly recommend uh, go to the asset store and, and bring in the Viking Village uh, asset into a new empty project and explore that out. All right, what about global illumination? 
Global illumination, you know, that's stuff that we used to do with ray trace rendering engines. And you would literally like wait an hour, two hours of frame to render, go home, have a coffee, whatever, come back. And now we can do a lot of that stuff in real time. It pre-bakes it, it can only affect, it can only work on static objects that 